Yeah, we're live. 6.52. I'm starting a little early because I might have to get off a little bit early, but that's another discussion for another day. Uh, the question for tonight is, I I have planned the next time I go down to West Tech, whatever EFI combination I happen to have on there, I want to run tests. Normally we do, as you know, we start from some RPM and run to some other RPM. We can program that into the dyno. And we go to wide open throttle, let the dyno grab the motor and load it at whatever our start RPM is, and then release it. And then we can program into the dyno whatever the acceleration rate we want is. Normally we pick 300 RPM per second, and then it goes through that, and then it measures power. And then what I'm looking for is, because you can you can change what you're measuring by changing the rate of acceleration. I'm not interested in that being an absolute number any more than I am about a Chevy being absolutely better than a Ford or a Ford being absolutely better than a Chevy or, you know, whatever thing you're talking about. Uh, a dyno, as you know, is just a device for measuring things. What I'm looking at is differences. I want to see what the difference is from one thing that we ran, a stock intake manifold, to a aftermarket intake. And did we get a gain? That's what we're looking for. We want to see, did did is spending my money worthwhile on the thing that we're trying to test. And then I can bring that information to you and say, hey, look, it makes this much power and you guys can decide, okay, well, that cost this much, Richard, and it's worth this amount of power. My question for, is not about that so much as it is about when we're doing that kind of testing or even when you are out driving in your vehicle, if you're running it on a chassis dyno or out on the street. Here's the question for today. And this is, and this is going to be the poll also. Will your motor make more torque at 2000 RPM? We'll pick a low RPM at part throttle. We're even gonna put, I'm gonna be specific, but you can put in whatever number, 50% throttle. Okay, the poll for tonight is, will your motor make more torque at 2000 RPM at 50% throttle rather than 100% throttle? You know, the thinking is just like with a two barrel versus a four barrel, you know, you, you just open the primaries and it works a lot better. Or, or you can do that also with a progressive linkage four hole open throttle body on a fuel ejected motor. Or what we do, and I've done this test a number of times, I actually haven't done it on the engine dyno that I can remember. I've done it on the chassis dyno a bunch. We were doing it with some Civics uh, or my Civic back in the day. It was actually the Del Sol. And we were running... Um, chassis dyno test at different throttle angles. So we were running it, we just put a stop in there and made it be like 50% throttle, 50% TPS. When we were doing it, I don't even think that we were looking at the TPS reading. I think we were just looking at the throttle, you know, where the throttle was basically. So we want to run it at some kind of decent opening part throttle and then wide open throttle just to see if there's a difference. So the question is, <laughs> when you're running that, well, will your motor make more torque at 2000 RPM at 50% throttle than it will at 100% throttle? So when I specifically told you or asked the question for low RPM, because the thinking is that we know or we should know having watched the, this channel, if you guys have watched this channel at, at, at any time and, and been to these discussions, that everybody wants me to run these things at lower engine speed. But if we take a look at a typical throttle body test, whether that throttle body is going into a blower like we did with that 2.3 liter blower on the LS with the conversion from Tom, who did an excellent job on that, or a throttle body going into a natural aspirated motor like into a, a like an LSR, LSXR intake manifold from Bass, or even a, a standard truck intake manifold. In this case, the photo that I put up is actually going into a Hemi and SRT8 manifold. Could also work on the Magnum, you know, any manifold, doesn't matter. So the thinking is that you open the throttle less than 100%, so you get, you know, all that velocity. And my question is, is if you have increased velocity through the throttle blade, does that increase to, does that, 
does that increased velocity continue? Does that translate to all of that increased velocity that you got through the throttle body if that happened? Does that translate into that happening, continuing through the manifold and then going into the cylinder? Do you get higher velocity cylinder filling at part throttle after that goes through the manifold? Because I don't think that there's, I don't know that there is um, anybody here that would debate, at least you shouldn't, and maybe this should be another question, but if the motor is running at a low RPM, which is why I picked this, at, let's say 2000 RPM, the airspeed through the throttle body will should be faster at that speed at part throttle than it is at wide open throttle. It's not, it's the motor is not asking for very much airflow. And so if you limit the size, the airflow going through there should be going fast. <laughs> that stands to reason, I guess. So the question then becomes, and then this is the mindset, uh, this is the internet mindset, is that, okay, that's increased velocity, increased cylinder filling. Yes, <laughs> and also possibly no, which is why I want to test it. I want to demonstrate what it actually does. Um, the other thing to think about, and, um, and I'm hoping that some guys, uh, I'm hoping that guys will suggest this and understand this, um, and I want to run it at like 25% throttle, 50%, 75, and, and then hundred percent and demonstrate what each one of those throttle angles do, which is a fairly easy test. The only thing that I have to do is I have to make sure that the air fuel and timing are the same for all of those throttle angles, which we have to see where they are um, on the map and then adjust them accordingly. But that brings up another point and, and a point that I'm hoping that somebody was going to talk about. And that's that it might be with your factory computer, let's say, it might be that at 25% throttle that your management system, um, where you are on the map, is going to be offered different air fuel and different timing based on that throttle angle and where you are if you have a, if you have a map sensor, where you are on that on the reading on the map sensor. So that in itself, <laughs> irrespective of what we're doing to change the airflow, what if there's more timing? What if there's less fuel? Those things can obviously affect the power as well. And we might see that on these applications where we go from 100 kPa, let's say at wide open throttle, maybe at 50% throttle, or certainly at 25% throttle, we should be at something less than 100 kPa. Now, it might be that depending on, and this is another variable that's in here, it might be that if we have a big throttle body, that 25% throttle or certainly 50% throttle puts us at 100 kPa at 2000 RPM. Because of how much airflow that thing is allowing, it might be at 100 kPa, assuming this is a naturally aspirated motor. It might be at that already. So then there, will be, there would be no change. There, well, there would be no change in the timing and air fuel that it would be giving at that point maybe the airflow would be different and we'd be able to see that from the mass air standpoint, but it would be, it, there's lots of interesting things that are going on, which is why I want to test it. So what I want to do is what I think I'm going to have to do is I'm going to test it. So at these different throttle angles, when we run it, let's say we run it from 2000 to 5,000 or whatever. Um, and the higher that we run it, the less power, the lower throttle angles are going to make. So I'm, I'm, they, they should, and this is what happens typically with when throttle bodies are too small, which is what we're doing. We're creating a throttle body that's too small. What happens is we start losing power on the top. It'll be interesting to see because all, obviously all that is also dependent exactly on the power output of the motor that you're running, what size throttle body you have feeding it. If it's if the throttle body is way oversized, it's going to be less responsive to that. If it's If it's just enough or undersized, it's going to be more responsive to that. So there's a lot of cool things going on here. And I think what I'll do is I think if I run it, say, on the L33 motor that has a small camshaft and it has the Brian Tooley um, truck Norris cam in it, which as a as a tra <laughs> as a tangent, um, I also want to test. And I talked to Brian about testing the low lift, uh, no, the NSR, the no springs required version of that truck Norris cam, because he said that they've done some things to the ramp rate and stuff that actually have that thing making fairly close within, I think four or five numbers or something of the truck Norris game. So it'd be that, that that's going to be an interesting test. So if you do that with less lift, then maybe you can get away with different springs. And stuff. So that's another test that I want to do, but on our throttle body, 
it's going to be cool because I, I want to see what's going to happen here. And if I start with that L33, a cammed L33 with a stock truck intake manifold and a stock truck throttle body, that would give us an idea. And then maybe later on, I could do it with something that where we have maybe excess throttle body. Like if we were to put a fast manifold on that motor, because it's fairly mild, put a, a fast uh, LSXR intake manifold on there and a 102 millimeter throttle body, and then run the same kind of test where we're over throttle bodied, then we would have more data to compare to the stock one. <laughs> the other thing we could do is we could get crazy and put a tiny little throttle body on the stock truck one, use an adapter and go down from the 78 millimeter throttle body, put maybe adapt a Ford 65 millimeter throttle body or 60 millimeter throttle body, so something even smaller. And then, then that way we have three points and we could see what, what, the, what kind of the trend is. So people would, what I want is people to not do the universal thing, even with my testing. I, I don't want them to do that. I don't want them to say, well, Richard did this test and, and this is the way that it is. Well, yeah, it was on that test on that motor on that day. But like I was talking about with the throttle bodies, it might be that the bigger throttle body is less responsive to that. So you, you don't have the same results if you test it like that. It's like when we test uh, ported heads, when we put ported heads on a stock LS3, for instance, we get very little power. Even if the heads are really good, you get very little power. The rest of the motor just doesn't need any more airflow because it already has weight. It already has like uh, 500. Yeah, it already has 150. It already has heads that will support 150 more horsepower, even in stock trim, even with the stock heads. And so it doesn't need another set that will support another 250 horsepower, let's say, because it's already not using what it has. So when you the test motor that you do the test on will obviously have an effect on what the outcome is. And none of that is absolute. So like, like when I did the test of ported heads on an LS3, and if everybody was running around saying, oh, ported LS3 heads don't do anything. <laughs> well, it didn't do anything on that motor. And, and then we go into the reason why it didn't do that, because it already had way more than it needed. Um, and then we test it on the, like the 468 or 495 or something where it could take advantage of it. Then all of a sudden we get good gains because you have something that can take advantage of that. So the throttle body thing, I suspect, you know, will will be comparable to that. So it'll be interesting. And if we if we do the same test with the bigger intake and bigger throttle body, but we do that on a bigger motor, basically that those results should mimic what we saw on the smaller motor with the smaller throttle body. If we can get those kind of ratios, you know, kind of in line there. Um, so that will be interesting. I am still working. Unfortunately, we're we're doing some things with our electronics here. And I'm still working on getting the video edited on comparing stock heads and hand ported heads and then aftermarket heads to see which one of those you guys, which one of those you guys should get. And again, um, all, all of that stuff, I'm just providing the data and you, you guys can decide whether or not power gains that you would get would actually be, you know, kind of worth the expense. And because that's always the question. And that's the question that I get all the time. Well, you know, is, is the juice worth the squeeze? Is, is putting, a, for instance, like on, on five liter Fords, I get this all the time too. Is it worth putting, you know, aftermarket heads on there? Or even <laughs> even more precise, is it worth going from this aftermarket head to this aftermarket head when I have a mild camshaft? The answer is probably not. Or even going from a GT40 head to an airflow research head or a trick flow head or something good that's better than the GT40 head but you have a really small camshaft in it. Then we have, or or you have a stock five liter intake manifold on there or a GT40 intake manifold. So you have something else that would be holding back what that upgrade could do. And, and I remember this is especially the case way early on and that people would do that kind of test and go, oh, those, those heads are junk. That just as a universal thing, because they didn't show any power gains on their combination that they were restricting with a 60 millimeter throttle body and a GT40 intake um, and shorty headers and a, and a and a stock cat H pipe and all that. So they had a lot of other things that were stopping the thing from making the power that it could, but yet, and they tried doing the, the head upgrade. And I also saw this when people would do a cylinder head upgrade, trick flows or air flows or darts or any, any of the better uh, aftermarket aluminum heads. When they would put that on an otherwise stock motor, 
They have the stock mass air, the stock throttle body, the stock HO intake manifold, stock exhaust, and then they would put the heads on and go, well, these heads are terrible. They don't, they didn't add hardly anything. They added 10 horsepower or whatever. Yeah, you don't, you have all these other things stopping it from adding any more power. So, and like I said, I don't want those things to be universal, but this, this test will be very cool. I, I'll be curious to see if we have uh, a change in power or how dramatic the change in power. And then what I expect to see is like the, the differences getting bigger, obviously with engine speed, but it'll be cool to see at least down low what's happening with uh, certainly the load in and I'm gonna have to make sure that the load in is, is consistent and stuff, all that. But it'll be interesting to see, like from 2,000 to 2,500 or even to 3,000, what 25, 50, 75%, and 100% throttle things do uh, to see if there's any difference. So it, 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 that should be kind of cool. So let's see what you guys got going on this lovely evening. <laughs> no, it's XR. We can afford that. Well, lucky, I can't. But lucky, lucky for me, the guys at West Tech have one of those sitting on the shelf that I can run whenever I want. I'd love to see a wastegate location test, uh, size and priority. I, I think size would be important um, and angle. The the 90 degree thing coming off of, off of the <laughs> off of the tube, or the tube's going this way and this is going this way. That's not always optimum. I when we, you see when I do did the um, the setups that we did for the dyno, the wastegate is put in the direction of the flow. The, the exhaust flow hits the wastegate straight on and then does the turn to go up into the turbo. So we put priority to the wastegates. And that's the way you'll see with IndyCar, Formula One, all, all those guys will do it like that because they want they want the wastegate to work very effectively. And it does like that. Turbo, the wastegate sizing could definitely come into play with um, depending on how much you're trying to control. And so you can undersize the wastegate. When normally what happens if the if you have an undersized wastegate or you have a wastegate in a bad location, I know because we've run those those old drag manifolds on the Hondas where the wastegate basically is just on one runner. <laughs> and the problem is it's very, very hard for them to control boost. Um, and what happens is you just have you have a like a runaway boost curve and it doesn't work very well. James. Uh, we're talking about everything. Everything's open tonight. Fox bodies, LSs, uh, the Hemi is the is the thumbnail photo. I'm new to the car community. Welcome, Magnum Big Bang. I actually just Magnum Turbo would be a good step in the right direction. Our two storage sheds full of Mopar engines. So that's good. Noodles is in the house. Allen Wrench Garage. Auto Salvage Outlaws. It's not too hot today. In fact, what is it? I don't think it was, I don't think it got that hot today. Yeah, it's only 67 right now. I think it was probably only in the 70s when I went and ran today. Scott, if the differential was bent, how did you bend the differential? I've seen guys bend the um, exhaust tube or the um, axle tubes, but the diff was bent. How how hard was it hit? Uh, I've been saying it for ages, but it's nice to see. Uh, oh, the Atlas in the in the Nova. Yep, that would be good. We had some days, a few days back, that it was in getting into the 90s, 93 or 94, um, and, and that's what it'll get to, obviously, in the summer. And we're, <laughs> we're kind of officially in the summer, I guess. We're in June. Um, but it was it was nice today. It was, it was cool this morning. I normally have to get up fairly early to go out and run but so that I can not be in 100-degree heat. Uh, Packard V12 PT boat engine, <laughs> PT109 in the house. JFK.
using boost group as a cheap rising boost curve. That works. I mean, it works for if you want to have, if you, for guys that want to run more RPM, if you have a rising boost curve, that's going to kind of be the result. It's going to have like a, like a centrifugal curve is like, you know, if it goes up, like it's, you want it controlled at let's say 15 pounds and then, but it creeps up to 18 or 20. That's okay. If it, if you want it set at 15 and it creeps like straight up to 30, that's not as good of a, of a deal. Holland, Michigan's in the house. Tim, where you are is 12,000 degrees Kelvin. That's, that's pretty warm. I would definitely get some sunscreen on. Ninety-three in Minnesota. John, so you on the past two engine masters are gonna be regular. No, I was just stepping in for Brule while he was gone. TSP F35 cam. What's a good head combination and intake for an LS3 Camaro? The the ones that you already have on there work really well. I don't I don't know what the specs are on that cam, but honestly, I don't have to know what they are because the the stock heads, like I said, flow 315. They'll support over 600 horsepower if you have enough motor to do that. Just make sure that that camshaft fits the available piston to valve clearance. Unless you're going nuts with the thing, I, I don't normally recommend guys do aftermarket LS3 heads. Bain. Hey, Richard, I'm doing a built 5.3 swap for my Silverado when I need to upgrade my trans and rear end. If it's a 4L60 and you're putting power and the 5.3 is putting out power, the 4L60 have been... What are you doing? That's Maya. Is somebody here? Oh, somebody here? Come say hello. Milo, huh? What are you doing? What are you doing? Come say hello. Come say hello. Say hello. Um, let's see. What heads did you all hand port in the upcoming test? Uh, we didn't hand port them. We, I, and maybe I said we that they were hand ported versus aftermarket heads. They were just ported stock heads versus aftermarket heads. So that's it was a it was a ported set of two forty three heads. You know the very best the factory head ever made. Let's see how our poll is doing. Will your motor make more torque at 2,000 RPM at 50% throttle rather than 100% throttle? So we got 63% saying no and 37% saying yes. Interesting. We always do on the dyno, we always do wide open throttle. So whenever we do it, but now we're going to do something different. On a peripheral port, rotary it didn't make max torque at wide open throttle at lower rpm it has a sweet spot in the pedal i'm putting a three rotor together with the drive-by wire now to map maximum torque are you do you have data to support that like the, are you doing that by feel or did you actually test that yeah the 4060 trans is not the ideal choice Yeah, Mike, I saw I saw David's thing about dinos. He um <laughs> I, went, I I always wonder where that magic knob that he's talking about is. That's not accurate. You, you want to stand over him? You think he needs that? What? What? Let me see what you're up. It was tested on the dyno, okay? Do you need to go out? Do you have to leave? Do you have something to do? <laughs> Milo got um, Milo the the male dog, and well, and her too. They both got um, some skunk action the other night. We have a creek that runs behind us, and there's definitely skunks in there, and possums and stuff. And uh, they uh, ran out late at night to go to the bathroom and came back smelling like skunk. It was it was lots of fun. The Summit S480 will support 1,000 horsepower. Yes, it will. It'll support more than that. The S475, I think, would do 1,000 flywheel. 
it's a trick poll question. Why? I thought we were rather specific on this one. 50% versus 100% throttle. George, uh, you have a new person question. Say we have a 4.8 liter motor with 300 CFM head flow versus a 5.7 with 250 CFM head flow. Which one would make more power and how displacement makes a difference on the same head flow? Bigger motors typically make more power, but it depends on a lot of other things there. A 4.8 liter motor, if you take a stock 4.8 liter and you put a set of ported heads on it that flow 300 CFM, which is fairly easy, you could port stock ones or you could like a, the video that I have coming up or you could get aftermarket ones that flow 300 CFM. But if the rest of the motor can't take advantage of that, it's actually not going to make very much power. And whereas a, a 5.7, a stock 5.7 with a 250 CFM head, which is like a 243 head, uh, would make, if they're, if they're both stock with no cams or anything in them, the 5.7 is going to make more power. I would almost bet that. The 4.8 would, wouldn't be anywhere near it, even with a really good head, because the head is not what's holding back the 4.8, the camshaft and the intake manifold and the displacement and the compression. Todd's in the house. Uh, Jake, on a turbo loss, is the 1.5 millimeter top ring handle boost better than a 1.2 millimeter top ring? Um, I've never had a situation where the ring is the limiting factor in the combination. So I don't know. Uh, Dan, unfortunately, we didn't ever see the skunk. Tim's in the house. Pendant. I've driven cars that definitely feel as though they had more torque at part throttle at lower. I have too. It seems like that there's something there. And that's what I was talking about earlier when we were talking about it might be that the um, some of what we feeling might be the way the converter is engaging, or like I was talking about with on the on the engine dyna specifically where we are in terms of the map, what what uh, timing we have, what air fuel we have there, as opposed to like the stationary kind of wide open throttle stuff. Shameless, if you're going to build a 5 liter 302 that's fun and reliable for a streetcar, what would your recipe be? It depends on whether it's going in a 5 liter Mustang or what's what it's going in and whether you want it to be carbureted or not. If it's carbureted, I'd run a dual plane and a 650 and some sort of decent heads and airflow research 165 or a trick flow uh, 11R or even their standard. Uh, like a, I'm, I'm trying to work with the guys from airflow now to test their enforcer head. But the other thing would be the trick flow, just the standard ass cast twisted wedge. Or if, if, it, if this is a budget thing, go to the wrecking yard, get GT40 heads and put those on, put a mild cam, a 274 or a 262 or something like that. Even a 258 drives really nice. And that would be a good combination. If it's fuel injected, then go with one of the aftermarket intake manifolds. If Edelbrock still makes their RPM too, that's good. The Holly System Axe is good. Um, you know, you could go with the tried and true. Again, if it's a budget deal and you're going to the record yard to get a motor, just take the whole Explorer motor out and run the Explorer, which is basically a Cobra upper intake manifold. And then, you know, put a put a small camshaft in. You have to put springs in and stuff too. Uh, you're flying out to Washington. Any plans on doing data testing on a one UZFE or first gen Lexus LS400? A billion dollars was put into R&D. A, a billion seems like a lot for R&D in one motor. It's kind of hard to get that back. Um, I, I have lots of stuff up on ported heads. Uh, I'm just saying that the ported head on a 4.8 or a 5.3 is not the first thing that I recommend. It's not even close. The, a camshaft is, is way more, is, is certainly the first thing. But if you look at the videos I have up on upgrading a 4.8 and upgrading a 5.3, where we did heads, cam, and intake manifold, we put the uh, trick flow 205 heads on, which work really well. Um, 
and and also ported set of 706 heads and the ported heads the ported 706 heads from the guys at total engine airflow which is also the guys that did the 243 heads that we tested those work really well and flow a lot more than stock and 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 make good power again it's just that you don't want to put that on a stock motor because that's not the limitation you have a head that flows 230 or 240 cfm and you have a motor that's only making like on a 48 it only makes on the engine dyno they make 330 horsepower so it's got way more cylinder head even in stock trim than it needs to make the power that it needs um so it has a long way to go before it could utilize even what's there uh bill i thought that i just answered your one use the fe i don't i don't have one of those and i've, I've never run one on the dyno so adrian you think that the 50 percent throttle will feel better <laughs> will i hit the converter <laughs> uh um so it, Feel better on the dyno accelerations. There's no rolling momentum. Wide open throttle at 2000 will make a bigger torque figure. Surely tip in to 50% in a vehicle will feel better. Maybe that's true, but what are we feeling then? What What is different there? On max wedge motors, what about which intake works best with those heads? I, I don't know if I've ever even seen a set of those heads. Uh, LS motors love pro chargers. You you can even delete the LS before the word motor there and just say motors love pro chargers because that's true. <laughs> Hemis do and five liters do and er everything loves boost. The RPM and where your motor makes torque is what matters. Even at half throttle, are you going to get peak torque right? If you, so if it would be both right. That's what I meant by the trick question. The RPM where the motor makes peak torque is irrelevant for a stationary load at 2000 RPM. It's not gonna make, that's not gonna make any difference. Peak torque is not gonna be at 2000 RPM. Think, think an LS then. I noticed PSI doesn't have 1200 or 1500 series springs with 560. Do I go up to the next value? I don't know what, um, where you're reading or what catalog you're reading or anything and i don't know what it's for and if you google it it clearly says a billion dollars into research on wiki so they're <laughs> so individuals put in the inf all the information up on wiki so it has to be true i'm just saying if you do uh on that motor if they invested a billion dollars, that means that they have to get back a billion dollars. And then you'd have to look and see how many cars they sold with that motor. How many would they have to sell before they recoup that? So a billion seems like a lot for, uh, uh, for R and D on one engine family. We need to test a vacuum operated throttle body at various pressures. I, well, why would we need to do that? Uh, Cameron, I guess, 1998 Explorer 5 liter, factory rate at 215, at Lunati, a 284 cam, so that's going to be like a 230 something at 50. 218? How is it 218 at 50 and 284 advertised? 488 lift, that's a small cam and it's a single pattern. Howard Springs, performer RPM and 600 Holly going in a boat. Like how much power, are you asking how much power it's gonna make? I, I would say that that's mid 300s maybe, low to mid 300s. Uh, Bill, I don't need to do any digging on the one UZFD. I'm very familiar with it. I know, I, I know a good deal about them. I just have never run one. Um, and I, it's because I don't have a way to hook them up. 
and a harness for them. Uh, you know, an ECU we probably have that would work, but it takes an awful lot to do a new engine family on the dyno. Didn't Ford do this with early modular Cobra engines, alternate between one or two valves per cylinder? They had an Emmerich plate, which effectively blocked off most of the runner. Um, Toyota did this, and other people have done this, where they and and the SHO Taurus did that too, where they block off one of the ports of the four valve motor, and that's kind of what Ford did with theirs. Theirs was just a blade with a slot opening up on the top, and so they would close that, and it would go through the short opening to get more low speed power theoretically. So you're doing first time turboing, David, and 08 Avalanche four draws on Pistons, BTR stage two truck cam, LS7 springs, 240. Will the truck cam work with those springs? 243 heads, LY5. Why do Chevrolet performance LS cams, hot cam, ASA cam, LS stage two, LS stage three, and Chevrolet stock cam all use single pattern lift? I, I don't think that there's any, I don't think that there's any secret there. Um, it might be the lobes they had to grind. <laughs> um, and if you see a lot, even dual pattern cams on the lift, um, I, I'm not that concerned with it being a single pattern on the lift, which we do all the time. Sometimes we even do reverse pattern on the lift, like with big block stuff. It's not uncommon for a dual pattern cam to be more intake lift, less exhaust lift but less intake duration and then more exhaust duration. That's that's fairly common on the big block stuff. But the fact that it's, if you go to a camshaft that's 617 lift and 600 or 598 lift or whatever, that's kind of the same thing. But if they're both the same, that works too. It's just that they have a dual pattern. And I think on a lot of the Chevrolet stuff, they have some stuff that's a really big split. Like it's, I don't know, 15 or 18 degree split on the on the duration. Dan, you missed everything. The poll is, will a motor make more torque at 2,000 RPM at 50% throttle rather than 100% throttle? Uh, oh, BTR sent that. Well, if they if they they'll know what springs work with their um, they'll know what springs work with their camshaft. What's happening to the 8.1? I haven't been down to West Tech to do any testing, so that that's also coming. Uh, a 5.7 with 243 heads and a hot cam, I don't think it's going to make 500 flywheel. I just watched uh, a lot of your videos and saw you sometimes choose underdogs. No, that the, the Toyota and the, the Nissan variant of that, like the 5.6, the, what are they, Titans or something? Um, the, I want to do those as well. I do have some Nissans coming up the RB25 and the L28 turbo. Uh, and I'm going to run both of those. And, I, and I, I plan on actually running one of those Toyotas. I just need to figure out what all is necessary for me to make it work. It's a, sometimes it's a lot of um, time and effort that goes into getting the thing. Like usually the motor mounts and things are fairly easy, but sometimes getting a flywheel, definitely figuring out what the crank and cam trigger are, the bell housing can oftentimes on the import stuff like that be an issue. And, you know, sometimes short of just machining stuff, which takes a lot of time and money. Uh, and it just makes it not worth it, quite honestly. There's so many other tests that I can run that going to great lengths to test another thing that, that I could do much easier and less expensively, uh, more, more, more realistically. Um, sometimes that stuff just gets put off. Uh, 100 horsepower on a motorcycle, that is good. Why was Visard, <laughs> I, I don't know. I Why was Visard uh, talking down on, on Superflow Dinos? He was saying that when he's there that, um, you know, guys are turning the knob, you know, to make more power. I'm just like, that's not, it's not a real thing. <laughs> I've been to lots of dinos and um, I've yet to see somebody 
do something like that. It's just ridiculous. He he also went off on a tirade about cam companies not knowing what they're doing. That, that you know, and I and I love David. I, I just I, he needs to not try to go against the world. Are there any suspension upgrades for an 06 Mercury Grand Marquis? Yeah, what platform is that? There should be springs and stuff for them. <whistles> Racer, I just finished a 355 small block, hydraulic flat tap at cam, former RPM heads, RPM intake, it made 400 foot pounds. Uh, 427 horsepower, 227 cranking. That's good. That's a good little small block. 400, 400 horsepower small blocks are good. Everybody loves those. Uh, Brian Tilly, there's a lot to say about inconsistencies between flow benches. The, <laughs> well, I, I think his comment was about dynamos and not flow benches. But if you're looking at a number, like I said, the dyno is a tool. So the same thing as an airflow bench. I, I've gone over this hundreds of times with Brian because his flow bench reads differently than the one at West Tech. It's not a matter of one being right or one being wrong. Um, other than people attaching their egos to whatever one they think is absolute. That's just silly. Um, there is something inherent in the designs of the flow benches, and Brian will go into that at great length when I have him on a on, on a live feed or something or, or a, as an interview, um, because there is a difference in the way that they're designed. But again, we're looking at flow differences. And um, you're looking, if you take a stock head, and then do the porting like they did at, at Total Engine Airflow, you get a dramatic increase. If the number is 319 and not 322, for me, that doesn't really make a difference. Uh, Visor wasn't talking about correction factor. He's actually talking about smoothing. Smoothing. The 360 Magnum is not back together, and I still don't know if everything's okay with it. It did have some rust in it. I haven't ever run, Jose, I haven't ever run one of the Thumper cams. Um, they have run those at West Tech, but I've never tested one. Jordan, the knowledge that you have floating around your brain is extremely impressive. <laughs> it's just random, random misfires. Uh, I, I do it. I'm happy to share it. That's why I'm. That's why I'm doing it. Midpoint smoothing algorithm is a thing. <laughs> um, we're not talking about whether or not there's a smoothing. There is, but we're talking about intent. So he's trying to make, David was trying to make um, a case for there being intent to like basically discredit other people that do dyno testing. And that's not, it doesn't make any difference whether you're a materials tester or what kind of degree you have none of that makes any difference the when you're talking about these people are doing these things that's that's just nonsense yeah it's not about correction factors it's about smoothing
Does the wastegate have to be in line to flow or can it be offset on a pipe that comes off of a parallel and backs? <laughs> backs it's, just, it's not going to work as well if it comes off at a 90 degree to the pipe like we talked about. Um, it'll be better if it's in line. I've seen other things work. Maybe at least try to have it come off at an angle to the pipe and not 90 degrees to the pipe. Um, and then the farther away that it is, the less effective it is from that from the exhaust flow. Trigger happy, thumbs up. Let's see how our chat is doing or our, our poll is doing. Will the motor make more torque at 2,000 RPM at 50% throttle rather than 100%? So we're still at 65% saying no. Yeah, he's now he's going old school. He's talking about the knob underneath the dyno. You know, oh, they're they're knobbing it, they're adjusting it. Again, <laughs> you you can make the dyno say what you want. You can put all kinds of configurations in there, although the displacement and stuff doesn't have a big effect on the frictional losses and stuff. But you know, if if that's what you want to do, you, you why don't you just bring up a bring up a run from another motor? Just, oh, here, look what my small block did. I had a I had an L31 with a cam in it and springs and a dual plane intake. And look, it made 587 horsepower and 540 foot pounds of torque. Wait, why does that description say it's a big block? Oh, it's not a big block. It was the, it was this one. I actually did this one. So you can if you have that sort of intent, you can do whatever you want. But the the correlation in that was that these people do this and that I'm the only one that does it. And that's not. Anytime somebody says that, you can tell that they're. Uh, ever tested an I1 Pro Charger? I have not. I sat in when they were doing a discussion on this at, I think it was back at, um, it was either, it wasn't at SEMA. I don't think it was at MPMC. Um, but I sat through one of their technical discussions. And I thought, this is perfect. Let's try this. And then we were just never able to put anything together. I don't know how much power that act, that blower will support, but it's a kind of a good idea. <laughs> the wizard behind the curtain, exactly. Most variations I've seen in dynos by far were chassis dynos. There's a big difference between the <laughs> even the Superflow chassis dyno that they have at West Tech has some sort of I call it an arbitrary calculation um, to give you a dyno. Th this is what it would do on a dyno jet because we all know dyno jets read high, <laughs> uh, so it gives you some kind of thing. But I've I've actually taken my Civic from a dyno jet down in uh, Huntington Beach and then brought it up to West Tech, and the difference was like. A couple of numbers. It was almost nothing. Have you ever missed with Holly Snipers or Elbrock Pro Flow systems? Are you talking about the fuel injection or just the intake manifolds? An old swing needle dyno. I remember doing stuff with those. The the when I went to visit the Volkswagen guys and they were doing that, they, <laughs> I don't know. These numbers weren't ever even, in my opinion, weren't ever even accurate because I, I think it was a Spesca or a Land and Sea, and they were like, wow, getting the load down, and they'd get it, and and it would, the motor would rev up, and they'd get it near the RPM, and then they'd release it. I'm like, how do you know what that number is? It was varying by like. 10 or 12 numbers. Oh, you, we just know what it is. I'm like, no, you're speculating. I said, can't we do a sweep, like start at 2,000 or 3,000 and go to 6,500? No, this, we, we can't do that. And we wouldn't do that on an air-cooled motor. I said, do you ever in your car, or like in your car, Megia, or your little bug out there, I said, when you race in the quarter mile, you go through all the gears, right? And how long does it take you? Well, I don't know, 13, 14 seconds? I'm like, yeah, right. But 
even if it's that long, I said, you, so you can't do a sweep that lasts that long. I said, you, you can get big fans on it and stuff. It would be fine. No, that's not the way we do it. I said, so how do you tell what the number is? Like it, we're just loading it at, you know, 4,800 RPM. How do you know what that number is? Oh, it, it was this number. I'm like, yeah, but it could have been the 12 above that or the 12 below that. What, what, what is the number there? <sighs> it's frustrating. So uh, pendant, sometimes the sometimes the sample rate of the dyno is not fast enough for what I want. Because while we're doing the run, you'll glance over, and this is especially the case if you're running a motor that made, consistently makes 499.4, and you see a 500 number flash up. But while it's sampling, it didn't grab that 500. It only grabbed the one that was right next to it or right below it or right above it. It was 499.4 or 499.7 or whatever, and it never gets that 500 number when you see it. But, you know, again, we're <laughs> if if you're looking at the difference between 499.7 and 500, you're looking pretty close. And the stuff that we're doing is not that's not necessary. I mean, it was on the when we did the piston flip thing, we were looking to the decimal point to that side of the decimal point because I wanted it to be spot on. But normally we're not. If it's if it's if it, we make a run, make another run that's one horsepower, that, that's okay for what we're doing. We're not we're not looking at that. If I put an intake manifold on it, it makes 20. I don't care whether it made 20 or 21. It's, a, it's in the grand scheme of things, yes, it was a big change. It made it made more power. Challenge Ferrari red lower on my Dino Jet than the other brands. Like a Ferrari Challenge car? Is that what you're talking about? Uh, I was also wondering what you recommend for EFI on the street and strip small block Chevy. The one I always use is um, Holly. It's an HP or a Dominator. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that the um, Terminator X or whatever is the same. The We also have run, uh, and I'm fairly familiar with the FAST system, but we haven't used that for a while. And now I'm just kind of learning the MS3 Pro, the Megasquirt stuff. Um, because I have to run that on the Atlas motor. So I'm not, I'm the wrong guy to ask about what to do on the street and strip because the wide open throttle tuning that I do is not anywhere near what's going to be necessary for the street and stuff. So there, there are much better tuner guys to ask that. Bill, what's your thoughts on, uh, what about the 4,200 inline six cylinder that's also on Stroy? I don't know what you're asking about it. Uh, ask a specific question about it. We, we've run the 4200. Uh, I've run it a few times on the dyno and it seems to work well. I have one, two of them going back together and we'll do more testing on it. Three fifty, two twenty four cam, roller rockers, belt drive, ProFlow 4, EFI, Victor Jr. So is a ProFlow 4, is that the four hole throttle body that injects fuel from the top? Is that what it is? If that's what it is, it's gonna be like a carburetor thing with a Victor Jr. Um, the Victor Jr., I think I think you have the wrong intake on there. I, I think a dual plane with a 224 cam would probably be a better choice. You, you would make more power in the range that you're gonna be running that motor most often. Um, but I, I would think that that's going to be uh, something something a little less than 400. Um, what did you tell me? Oh yeah, I don't know what uh, I don't know what heads you have on there. Yeah, Dan, the air pressure in the tire does make a difference on the on the chassis down stuff. And we're talking air cooled stuff. A, uh, a 355 Ferrari makes pretty good power. Uh, mine made 304 or 5, I think. No, maybe 310, I think, at the tire.
how is a Proflow XT LS3 intake manifold? I have run that. That you can see that video is up on the on the channel. It's it's a lot like the Holly um, High Ram. RL, do you still tune four six motors? I never did that. Uh, and do you rebuild transmissions? I don't do that. And where's your shop? And I don't have one. Four six four two valve Mercury Grand Marquis. The four six two valve can make good power, especially boosted. Well, when will we be doing lives on heck in line? That would be cool. Uh, Richard, do you like better cruising along in a four cylinder with a nice cushy ride in a good sound system, or driving an animal? The the one that I drive every day is not a four cylinder, and the ride's not great on it, <laughs> but it is all stock. And I very rarely do I ever listen to the radio, even when I'm driving to and from West Tech on a, you know, what is that, 450 mile trip. I almost never listen to the radio. The AFR enforcers, that's the one that I want to test. I'm, I think I'm going to try to do it on a five liter Ford first. Um, I just want to see how they compare. Yeah, Dan, the gearing makes a difference. Not just the gear you choose in the transmission to run it in, but also the rear end gearing does that too. Any experience with a ProFlow fabricated intake for the LS1? If that's like the Sniper Manifold, where it's a sheet metal fabricated deal, um, that video is up. You can take a look. They lose a lot of power through most of the curve compared to any of the long runner manifolds. The ProFlow XT is, if it's that same one that you're talking about, it's like the Holly High Ram. And it, so it makes power at the top of the RPM range. You can see the video's up on, just take a look at LS3 intake test. Three hundred ten. That's pretty good. Mine, mine also had the um, two B headers on it too. <laughs> Breaking the hearts of Subaru owners since nineteen ninety eight. The guys at West Tech have the, it says polygraph room on top of theirs. Uh, flow loss in Weber's was with a sock filter. Yeah, the the all of the filters that I've tried on Weber side drafts. Um, have all been uh, suboptimal. All the regulated class racing teams would do anything for the same two horsepower. But if it's not there, it doesn't make any difference. <laughs> if you run it once and then run it again and then it's two horsepower difference, the motor's still the same. Nothing happened. Overbuilt, what's going on? Oh, the, if it has, okay, it has an enforcer hit, has enforcer heads and a four speed manual G, <laughs> the GT45. Well, if you turn the GT45 up all the way, it, it will do 700 or something, 750. Jose, all the vortex were gone. See, it's, it's popular. Yeah, Calvin has been doing a lot for promoting that. So, Jeff, whatever it is, I'm against it. What about um, LSA blower tuning? Best way to raise compression on a budget LS build? Uh, go... A two wrecking yard motors would be good. You could swap the pistons. You could get the flat top pistons from a 4.8 and put them on a 5.3. Um, you could use a thinner head gasket. 
You could mill the heads. All those are possible. <laughs> yeah, not that. As long as we're talking about the thing that I want to talk about, then I'm then I'm all for it. Uh, trigger, yeah, that a 350 with that kind of camshaft in it. The single plane has me worried about the responsiveness. It would be much more responsive with the dual plane and, and the turbo, but it's going to work fine. Uh, deck the block on the heads. You might want to take a look before you deck the block. Uh, a lot of times the factory pistons are out of the hole, and so decking the block's not sometimes a good idea. On engine masters, they always run increasing boost curves on turbo setups for us street guys. Getting boost fast to your target is important. So you want more, you're more concerned with the response rate, and then you probably want it to be controlled all the way out. Um, on the engine dyno, it's sometimes a little bit more difficult, which is why I run two wastegates on my setups. Um, they don't always emulate uh, what I do. So we're going to close out our poll. Will your motor make more torque at 2,000 RPM uh, at 50% throttle rather than 100% throttle? 66 are saying no, and 34% are saying yes. So we'll get rid of that poll. Thank you all for participating. Our LS head gaskets reusable? Yes. Sometimes the, the original head gasket, when you go to take it off, gets damaged or you pull off a lot of the um, the sealant that they put on it and the coating that they put on it and i don't like to reuse those but once we do a you know if we do a surface on the block and on the head which we've done on some of the things and then we're doing like head gasket testing I, we just keep reusing the same head gasket over and over again uh who makes dual plane port injection that's a good question <laughs> also brought the pro flow xt the pro flow uh, xt is a short runner if i'm if i remember the one that you're talking about i think is kind of a short runner uh tunnel ram style manifold so it would be like the single plane I just thought of another engine building rule question. <laughs> Does the head gasket bore the same size or smaller than the cylinder bore? Uh, you wouldn't want the head gasket to ever be smaller than the cylinder bore. Um, sometimes what they normally do is, and most of the engines that we work on, um, this is particularly the case with big block stuff, the, the outside die or the inside diameter of the combustion chamber is bigger than the the cylinder bore is. So the gasket usually is done to um, work with the size of the combustion chamber and not the bore size. Because otherwise you have um, you have head gasket overhanging the uh, combustion chamber and that's going to be bad for flow. Um, it's, it, it, it can also, depending on how far it's overhanging, this is why you don't want it overhanging the bore, is that um, you can, what, what would happen is basically you would edge off portions of that head gasket and, and have it, if it's, if it's just going out the exhaust, it's not usually that big of a problem, but it, but it could be a hot spot. And, but if, uh, if it goes into the turbo, then it, it ruins the turbo. Not sure if it's been mentioned or at low RPM transient throttle situation can cause more airflow through the throttle and you get it steady state. So how, how does it do that? Is it because we have a lot of vacuum on one side of that and then the, the draw through is really quick and it grabs more, but once it stabilizes, then it's not drawing as much? Is that what the deal is? Yes, what you said. So you get a supercharging effect, which obviously we don't see on the engine dyno because we're we are rolling into the throttle, but 
yeah, wide open throttle, there's no differential, unless the throttle body is a restriction. I wonder if that would register on a mass air meter. Yeah, that, that's a good theory, but oh. one more minute. It does show on a map. We don't, we don't ever run one of those, but it, an air meter would be good, though. Do thinner ring, rings make more torque? I, a thinner ring can make more power because it can reduce friction. Yeah, the acceleration enrichment is change in throttle. Make it snappy. So the oil ring is the big thing, Dan. What what kind of tension do they have the oil rings down to now? If you have to have the compression help ring seal, you know that they're pretty light. Okay, guys, that, and our one minute is up. <laughs> Thank you guys all for showing up. I'm going to try to get this stuff. Um, I might have to even learn a new um, editing software, which is good for me. I mean, it's good for me to branch out a little bit. Uh, but I will see you guys all tomorrow. No kill, Maya. No kill.